Hello everyone, I'm Ben Jammer from Jammer Studios, and today video we're going to be talking about dragging, dropping, and snapping objects to various zones. I'll be showcasing what we have in this video coming up, but basically in our main scene we're going to have one object and three zones. So let's take a look at what this final product could look like. We have our object, he can spin around, uh, he can be placed in these various zones, doesn't matter. And if you're not selecting a zone, he will snap back to the original one. Not the closest one, but the original one it was at. So let's just jump right into this and see what we have. Let's go to our object scene. It's uh, this guy right here. And the hierarchy is we have our node, our sprite, which is the default one that uh, Godot gave us. We have our area and our collision shape 2D. Now these two can work. Uh, Together, we can just hop over to the signals for our area 2D, and we can see the input event. So that means that this is going to be, if we click the object, that's how we're going to drag it around. So we go to our script here for the object, and we see that the area input event is right here, where we have our selected node, that or selected variable, that means that we are going to be dragging this around if it's true. And if it's false, then we're going to be snapping it to the various zones that we have created. With the, with the button that we have called click. Now this is not a button in Godot. So let's go into our project settings. Go to input map. Add the action you want to call it. I've called it click, which is right down here. And then we're going to add the left mouse button. That's what I've done. You can do something different if you'd like. And once you have that, close this down. Copy this code, write it down in any way you'd like. And that's how we can click our object or select it. But we also have other two more variables, which I will dive into later. But basically, drop nodes is the uh, zones that we've created, those three zones that I showed you at the beginning. That's what the this is. And then the drop point is the 2D position of those zones, the centerpiece of it, which is where we're going to actually snap our object to when we deselect our object. And that's what we're doing in ready is we're just preparing these nodes or these variables. The drop nodes uh, for the zones, the zone group is going to be in drop zone or drop nodes, and the drop point is going to be the 2D position of those uh, drop nodes, the variables. Once we have these set up, we actually now need to create the physics process for this object. And like I said, if it is selected, then let's move it around, aka the global position is now going to be going towards the mouse position and at some rate that you'd like. And the alert function, uh, so we don't want the object to be snapping to our uh, mouse or else it's going to look a little clunky and it's not going to look that great. So we're going to be using the alert function which would give it some delay to our object. So it's not going to be clunky and it's not going to be snapping to our mouse which is what uh, takes in three variables, the uh, starting variable, the ending variable, and then the rate at which you want to go towards these two, the start towards the end. Then we have our look at, which gives us the rotation of our object. It's going to be looking at our global mouse. Now this, the way we have this set up is there is no offset, which means that there is a possibility that if we hold our mouse still, our object could just start freaking out and rotating rapidly and glitching out a little bit, but that's all right. Uh, it doesn't really do anything much for the program. And then if we are not selected, which means we've let go of this object, that means we're going to be snapping it to our various zones, the default zone uh, or this new zone, which we'll get into later in our input event function. But basically, if this selected is false, then our global position will go towards the drop point, which is the 2D position of our nodes. 
and then the rotation we actually want to set back to zero if you want to set it back to zero you can set it back to anything but rotation is the current rotation our object is in and zero is the rotation we want the object to be i want it to be looking back right as its original rotation was at the beginning at some rate and lerp angle is the same thing as lerp now if you get rid of look at rotation is now not a key thing unless you still want your object to rotate in some sort of way but i'll show you the variations that you can have with uh, these two later but let's just hop right into our input event function this is how we're going to be snapping our object to the different zones or the original zone and so if we have just released the left button or click button then select it is now false and we want uh we have a variable here <coughs> called short distance it's 100 100 right now is the radius of our circles our zones uh, that i've showed you we want those to be very similar uh, just in case we have circles and zones overlapping each other uh, in, in our various games, which will get a little complicated, that uh, you're going to need a little tweaking on to really perfect it. But we're, I would recommend to have it close to the radius of these zones and circles as possible. And now uh, for our drop nodes, we're going to be using this short distance to see if our object or our mouse is our mouse position is close to the positions of the various zones and that's exactly what this right here is doing uh, the distance from our mouse to the zone is it shorter than the radius 100 and if it is then we're going to select that new zone if not it's actually going to snap to the original one that it was already snapped to so that is now done. We'll save that and go to our drop zones. Uh, you can see here it is just a position 2D. And we've named it drop zone. And in the script here, this is where we're going to be drawing the circle. So it draws a circle and we're going to have it colored red. So if our object is not selected in this zone, it is going to be red to indicate that. And if our object is selected, then we will make the color of our circle black. There's only one black zone at a time. And if it doesn't have the object, then we shall deselect uh, the zone. And that would just come here and make the color red, the default color that we have here. You can change these colors any way you like, but we will save this. And now we must do one more thing before we actually end this off. We need to connect the object to the zone somehow. Right here, you see get nodes in group. That's what we're going to have to do with our zone. So if we select our zone here, go over to the node tab, go to groups, you're going to want to add whatever, you're going to, whatever name you call your group. Right here, I've called mine zone. And so you're going to want to change any way you see zone in my code to any whatever name you choose. I've chosen zone. So I'm going to keep so. And I'm going to save that. And once we have this, we can go to our main function and have our various drop zones in our object. And you want to make sure, so you can see my zones uh, in games, you're probably not going to want to see these zones. And then you're going to, then the hierarchy doesn't matter. But if you want to see the zones, make sure that the zones are at the top and the objects are underneath in the hierarchy. because the zones will be printed first so it'll be z level zero and then the objects will then be printed next on top of these zones and that's what we want because we want to be able to see these objects so once we play this we're going to see that our object just snaps to the closest zone here or zone zero in our case because that's what we wrote in the code it's going to snap to the first uh, zone that we created the drop zone which is this one and so if we we can uh, freely move this object around rotate it all we like it looks really nice really clean and we can just drop it right in these various zones 
and you can see that the colors start switching back and forth. Red meaning it's not snapped, black meaning it is snapped. And if we have this guy right here, he is snapped to this zone. If we go over here, it is closer to this red zone, but it's not in it. So let's let go, and it's going to go back to the original zone. It was at the black zone. And so let's close that right here, and let's go to our object and see what happens when we start tweaking things. So the look at and the rotation. Now this will not move our object around. It will not rotate it. You can see that it stays pretty flat and not moving uh, besides the global position, but not its rotation. We can still drop it around, do it all we like. It just will not rotate. And if we have uh, the lookout commented, but the rotation, the rotation really does just does nothing because our object is not rotating around. And then the last thing I want to show you guys is this short distance. So let's make this 50. The radius was 100, if you see it right here. The radius was 100, but now this is half the radius, which means we can still have our mouse in the zone. You can see, clearly see that this mouse is in the zone, which means that we want it to be selected, but we let go, and it's actually not going to snap to this zone because the snapping radius of our zones is now half of what you can actually see. You see, the radius here is 100, but our snap radius is half that. It's about right here. You can see if I come down here, I can snap it right at the center. But this extra 50 radius units, pixels, is, is worthless. It's just tricking us at this point. Oh no, I cannot snap it. What is going on? So let's come back here and actually change this to change this to 200, twice the radius. You could probably already assume what's going to happen. I move very close to the circle. I'm outside the circle. I snap it, and it actually snaps to these zones. And you can see uh, that's perfectly fine to actually do that because you don't need to actually be in the zone, and it's okay to have a little... A variation this will help out the user a lot more but it's uh if you have zones overlapping each other or very close to each other that's not recommended so you really want this number to be close to the radius you can have it be like uh 110 to be a little more just in case so that they can get right on the edge and still snap the to the zone that's okay as if you guys stick around to the end of this episode, thank you for doing that. It's been Ben Jammer from Jammer Studios. I hope you like this video. Subscribe to my channel, and please comment down below uh, anything you'd like to see on this channel. It's been real, but Ben Jammer, out.